got a special treat for you. I am going to be sharing my love of this quilt designer, Jen Kingwell. Her quilt's in back of me. Um, the one that I made there is called Gypsy White, and I made it years ago, and that's when I fell in love with the way Jen pulls her fabrics together, uses different patterns and colors. She typically uses bright stuff, which she has said that she loves bright fabrics, but um, Jen, like I said, I own many, 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 many of her patterns. I've made a few of her quilts, and I just love the way she puts things together. It just really screams to my heart. So Jen Kingwell, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is from Southwestern Australia, from Melbourne, and she started off her, her careers um, in a different field where she used a needle, but she, was, she went through nursing school and she became a midwife. And then from there, she was doing two jobs at once where she had um, bought into a quilt shop, so she was a partial owner of a quilt shop, and then she finally um, retired her, her stethoscope, so to speak, and her um, hematope and all of that nursing stuff to 100% focus on sewing. So she um, now owns a textile company called MID, which I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and I love, 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 love her use of color and patterns, like I've said before. Now she is a self-proclaimed eclectic quilter. And um, I know that before, um, one of my mentors, she said that she could never like put her finger on what type of quilter I am. And she kind of said the same thing, that I kind of fall into lots of different places. And maybe that's why I love Jen Kingwell design so much. So this week, I've got three special things to show you. Um, they're basically a ruler, but then there's also on some of them, they have patterns. Um, they're wonderful and I've created some stuff and I can't wait to show you. Um, so let's dive right in to this week's More Sewing with Michelle featuring Jen Kingwell. Okay, so let me talk about Little Diamonds first. Now, Little Diamonds is one of those um, patterns that um, it's really fun to do diamonds because it gives you the illusion of a different shape. Let me show you a little sample that I have started here. So it looks really difficult to put this together. Um, the trick is lining up those little diamonds. And another trick is you're going to sew them in strips. So you're going to sew one big long strip. Got some here. As you can see, I use my scraps. I love using my scraps and um, making fun quilts with them. So you're going to line them up in strips like this. Super easy to sew them together. Now let me talk a little bit about this template. Look how cute that is. And I'm going to hold it up close so that you can see that there's little crosshairs in there. Makes it perfect if you want to fussy cut your fabric and have something smack dab in the center. An animal, a flower, um, it could be anything. A dot from polka dots. Um, but I love that um, when template designers do that little bit of extra um, to help us utilize these rulers for more than just one thing. It also has dots on all of the corners and it also has a line to show you where a quarter inch is away from the side. Now this is really useful if you like to hand sew. Now Jen Kingwell loves to hand sew which is why I'm pretty sure that she did that extra mile and added those um, registration marks so that you can mark up and do hand sewing like English paper piecing with these rulers as well. It's probably another reason why they're so small. Now let me talk a little bit about that. Um, when you are quilting, the bigger the block, the easier it is to put it together. Not only does it make it faster, but it just makes things easier to put together. So the smaller the piece of fabric you have, um, I tend to say um, maybe the difficulty range goes up a little bit. So with these being small templates, they are for more of an intermediate to advanced quilter, but I don't want you to be, if you're a beginner, I don't want you to be frightened away from them. If you take your time, I have found that it doesn't matter what type of quilt pattern they say, if it's a, for a beginner or if it's for an advanced quilter, if you take your time, 
read the pattern and follow the process pretty much so anyone can do it. And that includes Y seams, which we'll be getting into a little bit later, as well as just basic sewing. It's all about sewing that straight line and making sure your fabric's cut straight and also that you can sew straight. And then pretty much so any quilt design you'll be able to pull off. So with that said though, it does have those different things. Now I wanna talk one more thing that I think is really important and I love is that she has cut off the points. And what that does, it eliminates the dog ears and it makes sewing together these pieces of fabric once you get them cut so much easier. Now I wanna talk real quick about the postcards. Now this is postcard project number two and it's called Little Diamonds. You'll see on the back that she gives lots of instructions and information and on the front she has a sample. And as you can see, her designs, fun, whimsical, lots of bright, fun fabrics that she uses. So that's what you get with that, as well as this wonderful little template. Now with the template, this is one of the fabric pieces, and I wanna show you just how easy it is to sew these together. So making sure that you have them lined up in the right area and that they fold to the correct thing, you simply are gonna line up those corners, and because those dog ears are gone, you can line them up super fast, super easy. And then I'm gonna put it in my machine. I have a quarter inch setting set up. Go ahead and drop it and sew that quarter inch. And just like that, I've added one more little diamond to my chain. So this is the little diamonds and let me go on to the next one. Okay, so this one I'm gonna talk about Flutterby. Now Flutterby is one of the only one of the Jen Kingwell um, postcards that does not have a pattern included. But don't fret, because I have come up with lots of different things that you can do with it. Now, here is the little template that we have here. And once again, just like before, she has the registration dots and also the line. So it will make um, like split racks, um, but in a small, small size. Um, it's just gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna have, you're gonna find lots of things that you can do with this because this is one of those basic quilt shapes that are integrated into lots of quilt designs. So it doesn't matter if you're gonna do hand quilting or if you're gonna sew on your machine. This is a fun little one. Now let me show you real quick. So like I said, it's Flutterby, but let me show you some of the different shapes you can create with it. So one of my favorite, let me get that one off the bat. Look at this, isn't that fun? So let me hold it up close. So you can see I've simply sewn them together and then I'm gonna add um, a border all the way around and possibly do these all over. Um, it reminds me of like a Millifloree bead. So love this, love this design. Um, one of the other things that I like is putting them together like so, and it kind of reminds me of like a twisted thread, a twisted rope. So I love this. This would be perfect um, as a border along a quilt. And then look at this one, another type of border. So this one is super fun. Um, I've often done this on my quilt borders, and it's just fun and easy to do. Now, when you get your pieces lined up, I've got two different fabrics here, and you can, depending upon how you cut your fabrics and in what position when they're cut, you can create lots of different, different patterns and designs with this one template, and that's why I love it. So on this one, I went ahead and added the center line, and I've added all the registration marks, so if I wanted to do hand quilting, I can do that. Now this one is one of the sections sewn on my machine. And then if you put them together differently, you can see where I can make it to where I can make a circular feature. Can't do that with lots of templates and rulers, so I love that about this. And this is one of the little segments that I have um, that I like. I can't wait to make more of these because I think it looks like a twisted rope. So with that said, um, that's what you can do 
with this particular one. And um, like I said, there's lots of different things that you can do with Flutter By. Now I want to talk about stretched hex. Now, um, stretch hex was one of the funnest ones, and I found myself getting completely carried away when I was putting together a little sample for it. So let's first talk about um, the design. You can see she's got lots of fun different things, and she gives you all the instructions on how to make it. And once again, her little template here, like the other ones, it has the registration marks and it has it in all of the corners. And as I love, you can see that the bulk is trimmed off at the end so you can really trim it up closely. Now, I love stretched hex. It's one of those um, quilting designs. Um, anytime you have points like this that you're gonna have to take a little bit extra care. And with this, you will be sewing Y seams. Now, Y seams are one of those things that um, when I first heard about them, um, there was a couple things that I was a little bit paranoid about. Sewing curves around things, um, sewing a button with my sewing machine, and Y seams. Those three things. Now, I've conquered all of them, and you can too. Um, but Y seams, once you know how to do them and the little tricks to sew your Y seams, you're going to be so much better, and it's going to be fun. It's one of those... Um, it's a really fun design to create with your quilting or any other sewing that you have. So once you conquer those white seams, you're good to go. So let me show you real quick. I've got this long, like I said, I went a little crazy. So I was planning to do um, a, a larger sample for you guys. But once I started doing all of these, I went, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have time because they are such a small little template. Um, it was going to take me more time um, to get these done and I wanted to get the, the video out for you guys so but you can see I went ahead and grabbed one of my charm packs so all of the colors coordinate and I've gone ahead and started sewing them together so the first step is to and this is the fun and easy one and it's super super fun and not challenging at all basically you're just going to sew one long seam there from side to side and I can show you up close so easy easy peasy and I did once again a really long section of it and then this is where the Y seams come together and let me grab this one here you can see when you go to put them together that um, you can't sew a straight seam so with this what you want to do with the Y seam and one of the great things about what Jen did was like I said she got rid of those dog ears so you can see that they line up perfectly and it's just a matter of taking your time, lining up. I highly recommend that you use your pins here. And what I like to do, here's my little trick, is I line up one of the difficult sides here, and then I pin it. And when I pin it, I pull this away. And then you can go ahead and do the second side, do some pinning. And you know I'm not always big on pinning. But when you need to pin, you need to pin. And that way you can see, I'm going to pull this all away. You can see where you need to sew. And then the trick is with any Y seam, at least for me, is I only sew and stop a quarter inch before I get to the edge of the fabric. And that way everything will lie perfectly and open up for you. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this for you real quick. What I just pinned. And once again, I start a quarter inch away from that side drop and I make sure that everything's in alignment go ahead I like to do the tacking stitches on my Y seams and then sew and then I do a tacking stitch a quarter inch away from the edge of that fabric line and when I pull it out simply remove your pins open it up and then you have another seam set so it takes a little bit more time, but it's one of those things that um, when you make something like this in the end, you're going to be so proud of yourself because it was more time consuming to get all these little intricate pieces together. But in the end, it is so rewarding. So once again, this is the stretch hacks and I've got this big long one here. 
And I'm going to add this to it, and then I'm going to keep going. You never know when I'm going to stop. So that is your stretch tags. So now that you have completely fallen in love with Jen Kingwell Designs, let's talk about the little postcards. So this is postcard project number five, and it is the stretched hex. And like I said, it comes with this wonderful ruler in there. Plus, you get the postcard, which has the instructions to make it. So it's a really fun one to do. Um, so stretched hex is the first one. The second one is snowball. Now, Snowball comes with two different little rulers in there, and um, it is project number seven. So this is Snowball, and then we have Little Diamonds. And Little Diamonds has the little ruler there, and like I said, it's just so much fun. I love creating with these. And also, just so you know, you can use these rulers to mark them out to do hand sewing as well. So you don't have to always use them on your sewing machine. And the last one is Flutterby, and we've got this wonderful ruler there. So we have those four things, and as you know, all you have to do to pick up any and all of these projects um, and um, rulers from Jen Kingwell Designs is go to mores-sew.com or click on the link in the description where you can go to More Sewing with Michelle landing page and you can purchase any and all of these um, wonderful items from Jen Kingwell. But also remember, you can pick up anything from past episodes of More Sewing with Michelle, too. So one-stop shopping, and we will find you there on mores-sew.com. Now let me talk about my last Jen Kingwell um, postcard and um, template, and it's called Snowball. Now, Snowball is one of those traditional quilt blocks. They're so fun to make. Um, and this one's got a little um, feature on the end. So let me show you the card here. And look how cute. Isn't that sweet? Look at the fabrics and look what she did with it. So we have two templates with it. And once again, like her other designs, she has all the information on there. But see if I can get that to stand, we have two of the little templates here. So we have an octagon, and it's got all the registration dots as well as the lines to show you where a quarter inch is away. So that'll help if you want a fussy cut. And then the same thing on this little one here. And it's got registration marks as well as the quarter inch seam. So you can really fussy cut and get your fabrics precisely the way you want them. And I love that about these. So I've done, I've cut up a bunch of these, and I've got some here. Um, let me show you real quick the two pieces. Whoops. So you got two pieces. They go like this. And then once you put them together, this one is definitely like a puzzle um, when you're putting this block together. So let me move the postcard out of the way. And I'm going to show you. I've got two of these. Simple seam across. Keeping in mind, this is also Y seam. So I have left a quarter inch on each side. So that when I open it up, you can see that's pretty easy. And what I like to do is I sewed um, a row of just the octagons together. And then you go back, and this is where you sew in with a Y seam those little squares in between. So I went ahead and I actually finished a sample on this one. I'm not going to talk about Y seams and all of that before because I did that before. But I want to show you what I created. So I went ahead, let me hold it up close here, and um, you can see I have um, 12 different um, of the octagons, and I've added the little squares, and it was just a lot of fun to create. So I did finish one thing, <laughs> one little sample for you guys, but once again with these Jen Kingwell um, designs, the postcards, they are smaller. So um, it's a little mini quilt that I will hold on to. It can be perfect on a tabletop or just on the wall or just a little decoration. But it's a fun little thing. And I love these Jen Kingwell um, postcards and the little templates because that's what they take something where you can just use leftover stuff and really create something beautiful with them. So keep in mind, not just for sewing on your machine, you can also do hand sewing with every single one of these and create some fun and intricate little designs. 
So I'm going to have a little video, and I'm going to have close-ups to show you everything really close up as far as what they have. So that'll be next. So close-ups. I want to show you this close-up of Little Diamonds. Now, Little Diamonds, you'll see that um, it's one of those really fun quilts to put together. It's not difficult, that's for sure. It's just a matter of sewing a small piece together, piecing a long strip of those diamonds together, and then you simply sew them in one long strip together, matching up where they connect so that it looks smooth. So not difficult. And those are our little diamonds. And then we go into our Flutterby. Now I want you to remember that Flutterby does not include any instructions with this particular template. But this template offers so many things that you can do with it. So if you look at my video, you'll see all the different shapes. And those different shapes, when you put them together, can create lots of different things. I love to make the rounds as well as making that twisted rope and also on the sawtooth. So lots of different things you can do with Flutterby. And this is one of those templates that you're going to find that you go back to time and time again because it is just a fun one, especially on borders of quilts. I love Flutterby. And then the next one is our stretched hexi. Now, stretch hexi, I went a little crazy with, if you remember. So I've got these super long strips that I'm putting together, and they will take you a little bit more time once again because they are made with Y seams. Now, Y seams, um, like I said, they're not difficult. It's a matter of remembering to start and stop a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric, and then as you piece everything together, it'll all come together and lay flat. So conquer those Y seams and have fun with your stretch text. And then the last one is the snowball. Now snowball is one of those um, traditional quilt blocks that have been around a long time. I love that Jen Kingwell has the two different templates that we can use with it. It's the only one that she has the two templates for. So snowball, look at these close-ups of this quilt that I, the little mini quilt that I made and also all the different shapes. It does require the two shapes to pull it together, but I love um, how easy it is. Once you learn your Y seams, you can put them together. And with that said, um, so this is one of those, one of those things where it is um, beginner friendly, but definitely if you are an advanced quilter or intermediate, it's going to be um, something that's going to let you sit down and really focus on your craft and do small seams small items to make mini quilts or even a large quilt with small pieces. How striking would that be with these wonderful Jen Kingwill designs as well as her templates. And with that said, it's been my pleasure once again. Thank you for joining me for more Sewing with Michelle. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to go to moors-sew.com or click on the link in the description where you can purchase any and all of these wonderful Jen Kingwill postcards and templates. Until next week, bye-bye.